Hello everyone, welcome to Competitive Academia. This is our second part in the series of most important MCQs from Environment and Ecology, especially from Shankar IAS. We have also incorporated those questions which has been left out by Shankar IAS and we have got it from other books like Drishti. So let's start with the first question. Which of the following is not a major air pollutant? The correct answer is fly ash. Fly ash is produced through combustion of solid materials. They are fine powder and tend to travel far in the air. The major air pollutants include lead, suspended particulate matter, sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide, chlorofluorocarbon and even ozone also which is produced in the uh, ground that is through the mixture of volatile organic compounds. The next question is about the composition of fly ash. We have to find out the composition of fly ash. Here option D is the correct answer. Aluminium silicate, calcium oxide, silicon dioxide, magnesium along with ox silica, alumina, oxides of iron, calcium, magnesium and toxic heavy metals like lead, arsenic, cobalt, copper, etc. So question can also come like fly ash constitutes of only uh, heavy metals or only minor minerals. So the answer would be it also consists of heavy toxic metal as well as the non-toxic metal. So let's move to the next slide. The next question is about bisonesis. Bisonesis involves destruction of lung tissues. It is caused due to it is caused due to cotton dust when it gets collected in the lungs. It causes it even causes uh, cancer. So when asbestos dust gets collected in the lungs, it is called as asbestosis, which causes severe respiratory problem. Silica dust it causes silicosis, which affects again the respiratory. Uh, tract and coal dust which which is also known as black lung disease it causes black lung cancer or black lung disease and also affects the respiratory tracts asbestosis silicosis and black lung The next question is, National Air Quality Monitoring Program is an initiative of, it is an initiative of Central Pollution Control Board. Now, Central Pollution Control Board is a statutory body, an apex body for mon monitoring pollution in our country. And it has come up with various initiatives uh, like National Air Quality Index, which was introduced in 2015 in 14 cities. Then we also have National Ambient Air Quality Index, which was notified in 1982 and revised in 1994. We'll deal with National Air Quality Index and National Ambient Air Quality Index in the coming slides. These are very important for our exam. We need to know the pollutants. The next quality is about as I told you, National Ambient Air Quality Index. It consists of how many pollutants? So there are two things. First is National Ambient Air Quality Index. These consist of 12 pollutants. On the other hand, the National Air Quality Index, it consists of 8 pollutants. So National Ambient Air Quality Index consists of 12 pollutants. These are PM10 that is particulate matter 10, particulate matter 2.5, sulfur dioxide, nitrous dioxide, ozone, lead, carbon monoxide, arsenic, nickel, benzene, ammonia and benzopyrene. You need to know the difference between national air quality index and national ambient air quality index. The next question is, National Air Quality Index consists of which of the following pollutants? In the National Air Quality Index, we don't have carbon dioxide. 
So we can eliminate option number one and straight away reach the answer. We have PM 2.5 lead sulfur dioxide. As I already mentioned, in this National Air Quality Index, we have eight pollutants. They do, does not include arsenic, nickel, benzene, and benzopyrene, which is included in the National Ambient Air Quality Index. I'll repeat again, it includes PM 2.5, PM 10, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, ozone, lead, carbon monoxide, and ammonia. The next question is, which of the following is an indicator of water pollution? Here, option D is the correct answer. Now, dissolved oxygen is an important for the survival of aquatic organisms and presence of organic and inorganic it indicates the presence of organic and inorganic waste in water. High rate of uh, biological oxygen demand indicates low level of dissolved oxygen content of water. But we find that chemical oxygen demand is a very, very slight uh, better model to, to measure the pollution load in water. But all these are indicators of water pollution. Here the concept behind this is that if there are more number of species in a water body, they will need more water. They will finish up more oxygen, which will be, which becomes uh, competitive for other species to survive. The next question is, you have to match the following. The correct answer is B. Minamata is associated with mercury. Itai itai is associated with cadmium, which is also known as ouch ouch disease. And blue baby syndrome is associated with nitrate, nitrate, uh, which is also known. This blue baby syndrome is also known as methyl hemoglobia. The body becomes blue. The next question is, which of the following is not the source of soil pollution? The correct answer is D. All these are source of soil pollution, that is chemical fertilizer, radio waste, industrial waste. Then we also have pesticides. We also have discarded materials, which forms part of the soil pollution. The next question is, you have to match the following. Here the correct answer is option A, incineration plant, sorry here the option will be option D, incineration plant that is burning in large furnace, pyrolysis, combustion in absence of oxygen, composting is fungi and bacteria are used to decompose the waste and sanitary landfill is a scientific method of landfill. Let's see the option. Yeah, option D will be the correct answer. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Incineration plant is burning waste in large furnace. Pyrolysis is combustion in absence of oxygen. Composting is fungi and bacteria are used to decompose the waste and sanitary fill is scientific method of landfill. Sanitary landfill is one of the most hygienic and it is built in a methodical manner to solve the problem of leaching. Now what is leaching? Leaching is the percolation of liquid waste and mixing it with the water table which is prevented by sanitary landfills. The next question, waste minimization project is undertaken by, it is taken by all of these. Here, this is associated, uh, this is assisted by World Bank, financial assistance is given, given by World Bank and the 
assistance is done by National Productivity Council. National Productivity Council is located in New Delhi. And Ministry of Environment and Forest is the nodal agency for this. What does this do? Waste minimization project, it helps the small and the medium industrial clusters in waste minimization in the industrial plants. The next question is, consider the following statement. Bioremediation involves using plants to remove contamination from the soil and water. The second statement is phytoremediation involves using genetically modified microorganisms to remove contamination. Here both the statements are wrong because bioremediation involves using microorganisms. Gen not ge it is not specified that whether you have to use genetically modified or not but you have to use uh, microorganisms and in phytoremediation plants are used to remove the contamination. So the statements have been changed. The next question is, you have to match bioventing is supply of air and nutrients to contaminated soil. Biosparging is injection of air under pressure below water table and bio augmentation is microorganisms are imported to contaminated site to enhance degradation. Option D is the correct answer. Now bioremediation and these bioventing, bioaugmentation and biosparging, these are in situ method of remediation of contamination. All right, we have ex, -site, ex situ and in situ. In in situ, in the place of contamination itself, we take steps to remove the contamination. And in ex situ, we shift, uh, we bring something else from other place. The next question is, Microfiltration is a process in which here option B is the correct answer. Fungus are used to filter toxic waste. Here fungal mycelia. Mycelia is used. To filter the toxic waste. And we have another concept where fun, fun, fungi are used like in microremediation, fungi are used as a sort, as a measure of bioremediation. The next question is about acid rain. Acid rain occurs due to, here option C is the correct answer, both sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxide combine with rainfall. Now the acid, the pH of acid rain is less than 5.6. It can be in the form of dry deposition or wet deposition. Dry deposition means the acid chemicals may be incorporated into the dust or smoke. And wet deposition, it, it may be in the form of rain. It mixes with the rain water. The next question is, you have to match the following. Geothermal energy is producing energy from the hot dry magma hot water springs cogeneration is producing two or more forms of energy from one fuel ocean thermal energy is producing energy from tides and hydral energy is producing energy from water a very easy question Option B is the correct answer. These are uh, it is these are forms of renewable energy. So India has a target of around 175 gigawatt to be pre, uh, to be taken up by 2022, where 100 gigawatt will be contributed by solar energy, 60 by wind, 10 by 10 by biopower, and 5 by small hydro power. This is very important to remember, 175 gigawatt.
the next question is you have to find out which statement best describes about genetic diversity here option c is the correct answer it is concerned with variation in genes within a particular species let's see the options the first option speaks of uh, that species differ from one another markedly in their genetic makeup this is species diversity the next option is species differ from one another in terms of their habitat from the habitat we have to conclude that it speaks of community community species there are three levels of diversity they are genetic diversity species diversity and ecosystem diversity the next question is you have to consider the following statement and find out the correct statement here option d is the correct answer both the statements are correct species richness means the number of species which is found within the community and species evenness is the proportion of species at a given size how evenly it is distributed the next question is which of these is not an in situ form of conservation in situ ex situ are very important this has been asked in the previous year questions the correct answer is seed bank seed bank genetic bank all these are example of ex situ form of conservation if the conservation is taken in the place itself then it is in situ conservation for example biosphere reserve national park protected forest reserve forest community forest all these are examples of in situ form of conservation in ex situ the for the protection we shift the thing to uh, other place for example seed bank botanical horticulture and recreational gardens all these are example of uh, ex situ form of conservation we have a seed bank in norway uh, which is known as arctic seed vault the next question is the red data book is a list of it consists of all of these it consists of the names of extinct species endangered and critically endangered species threatened species near threatened least concern and there there is also a category of data deficient whose data is not available so red data book is introduced by iucn the headquarter of iucn is located in switzerland it was formed in 1966 the red data book consists of pink pages which includes the name of those species which are critically endangered and also includes green pages where species are mentioned which were endangered earlier but have been recovered so let's move to the next question a total of how many biogeographical realms are recognized all over the world there are eight biogeographical realms the realms is a continent or subcontinent size area with unifying features of geography and fauna and fauna flora for example we have the neartic realm we have the paleartic realm we have the africo tropical realm we have the indo malayan realm oceania australian antarctica neotropical realm we have eight realms in the whole world the next question is how many biogeographic zones and provinces respectively are there in india there are 10 biogeographic zones and 25 biogeographical provinces the geographic biogeographic zones have been further divided into provinces which are 25 in number uh so let's see some of the names Biogeographic zones in India includes the Trans Himalaya, the Himalayas, the desert, the semi deserts, the Western Ghats, the Deccan Peninsula, the Gangetic Plain, the North East India, the islands, and the coast. The next question is: Here, this number has been repeated. Anyways, this is seventy third question. this is 74th 
which of the following are the characteristics of a mammal here the option is wrong it will be d and the option in d is 2 and 3 mammals are warm blooded avians are cold blooded mammals are warm blooded they live no it will be only 3 here option b is the correct answer mammals are warm blooded they live on land they can also live on water but not both because amphibians are categorized as those who live on land and water they give birth to young ones this will be the answer only this option is for reptiles they have scale in their body i hope it's clear mammals are warm blooded the second option is for amphibians it is not for mammals that is they live on land and water the third option is for mammals it is correct it gives birth to young ones and the fourth option they have scale on their body this is for reptiles so answer b will be the correct answer the next question is national bureau of plant genetic resources is located in It is located in Delhi. The next question is Wildlife Protection Act give the highest protection to which schedule? Here option B will be the correct answer. Schedule 1 and part 2 of Schedule 2. Schedule 1 and part 2 of Schedule 2. This part includes, uh, Schedule 1 includes lion tail macaw, rhinoceros, great Indian bustards, narcandum hornbill, nicobar megapod, black buck. Part 2 includes Dhol, Bengal Porcupine, King Cobra, Himalayan Brown Bear, Flying Squirrel. These, these animals are important for us to at least to know the names. The next question is, Vermins are listed in which schedule of the Wildlife Protection Act? Wildlife Protection Act came in the year 1974. We have a question with this also. Vermins are listed in Schedule 5. It includes the names of like mice, rat, common crow, flying fox. Schedule 6 includes cultivation, collection, extraction, trade, etc. of certain plants and derivatives are prohibited. For example, blue vanda, red vanda, cycad, lady sleeper, orchids, etc. In Schedule 3 and 4, we also consist name of certain species. They are also protected but lower as compared to Schedule 1 and Part 2 of Schedule 2. The highest protection is provided to Schedule 1 and Part 2 of Schedule 2. This is very important. This can be confusing also. The next question is, which of the following are categorized as critically endangered? Here option A is the correct answer. Brown bear. Brown bear is categorized as critically endangered by the IUCN. Along with brown bear, we have Malabar, Sivet, Pygmy hog, Forest owlet, Bengal florican, Hawksbill turtle, Ghadial, Terrapin. The names of critically endangered animals, endangered animals, at least those which are very famous and which have been in news is very important to remember. Question has been frequently asked by the UPSC and it is also expected to be asked by the state PCS because they are also moving in the same trend which is followed by UPSC.
we'll see the status of these animals in the upcoming question i have listed the names of critically endangered endangered and vulnerable animals then the next question is malabar sea vet is listed as malabar sea vet is listed as critically endangered as i have already mentioned the other critically endangered animals are pygmy hawk we have hawksbill turtle we have bengal florican we have gharial we have terrapin the next question is which of these animals are listed as endangered here option b is the correct answer red panda lion tail macaw nilgiri tar these are listed as endangered pygmy hog is critically endangered some important endangered animals are tiger most importantly we have to know the status of tiger elephant in india then we have indian buffalo which is also endangered we have brown antelope deer very important we have ganges river dolphin the aquatic animal of india ganges river dolphin we have hispid hare we have hulog gibbon all these are listed as endangered the next question is which of the following are categorized as vulnerable here we can use the uh, technique of elimination tiger as we know it is an endangered animal cheeru is also endangered so we have indian soft uh, shell turtle and swamp deer so some of the animal which are categorized as vulnerable are dugong indian gaur sun bear nilgiri langur clouded leopard very important capped langur great one horn rhino again a very important animal then we have bengal snow loris of these the most important which you cannot afford to forget are swamp deer great indian rhino we have dugong and clouded leopard which are vulnerable in the endangered category the most important are tiger ganges river dolphin and cheeru which are very very important in the critically endangered we have pygmy hog gharial malabar sea vet because this have been asked by upsc the next question is which of the following is known for its aribada it's a practice which is followed by one of these animal here the correct answer is option a olive ridley turtle what they do this is a form of mass nesting they come to the coast and they in large number they lay their nest together the whole community so this practice is known as aribada it is a very beautiful scene you can search you can google for for the pics and see it so let's uh, revise the status leatherback turtle is vulnerable olive ridley turtle is vulnerably categorized hawksbill turtle is critically endangered and bengal florican bengal florican is critically endangered bengal florican is also critically endangered and hawksbill turtle is also critically endangered very important to remember leatherback turtle and olive ridley turtle is very important olive ridley turtle has been asked around a number good number of times in the upsc questions the next question is which of the following is not a secondary pollutant you have to see here that it is asked which of these is not a secondary pollutant similar question was asked in uppsc 2018 they asked about a primary pollutant here ddt is the correct answer ddt is a primary pollutant other are peroxyacetyl nitrate ozone ammonia all these are secondary pollutant pan is formed uh, with the combination of nitrogen oxide and hydrocarbons ozone ozone is formed in the ground which is also known as ground level ozone with the help of volatile organic compounds they react with nitrogen oxides in the presence of sunlight 
is also forms photochemical smog photochemical smog see secondary pollutants are formed due to the interaction among the primary pollutants ammonia is a vague statement here the next question is which of the following is biodegradable biodegradable elements are those which can be degraded by the microorganisms naturally here 1 and 2 will be the correct answer sewage waste and household waste heavy metals radioactive elements are not biodegradable that's why there are a lot of concerns in their storage and transportation dumping etc the next question is you have to match the following and choose the correct answer from the code given this is also a format which is followed by upsc and also state pscs so you have to get used to with the pattern methane it contributes to greenhouse effect sulfur dioxide it leads to formation of smog lead it affects the nervous system and nitrogen dioxide causes gingivitis it is one of the cause not the sole cause the correct answer is option b the next question is the environment protection act passed by the government of india for the preservation and protection of the environment in the year it was passed in the year 1986 a very important act in 1974 we have the water prevention and control of pollution act 1974 water we have the water pollution act you can simply remain like this but the name is uh, very big water prevention and control of pollution act in 1972 we have the wildlife protection act wildlife protection act was passed in the year 1972 i'm sorry if i have mentioned wrong in one of the questions it is it was passed in the year 1972 please remember in the year 1981 air pollution act was passed air pollution so we have environment protection act in the year 1986 we have wildlife protection act in the year 1972 we have air pollution act in the year 1981 and water prevention and control of pollution act 1974 the next question is which gas was the cause of bhopal gas tragedy here answer c is the correct answer methyl isocyanate i think you have you are familiar with this gas this was the gas which was cause of recent vizag gas tragedy which occurred in andhra pradesh in this month only styrene So let's move to the next question. The gas responsible for ozone depletion is here. All the three will be the correct answer: nitrogen oxide, carbon tetrachloride, and chlorofluorocarbon. Ozone layer is very important for the survival of human beings because it protects the living beings from the harmful ultraviolet rays of the sun. and ozone layer is very stable in the stratosphere in the ground it becomes very harmful for the living organisms the next question is according to the world health organization the level of noise for noise pollution is it is 45 decibels the correct answer the next question is convention to prevent transfer of e waste between different countries is this is one of the most 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 favorite topic of upsc and state pscs you need to know each and every convention and treaty and it is very easy because you have it comes in the news very frequently and you, if you follow the news you get used to this terms so here the correct answer will be basel convention basel convention is related to transfer of e waste 
mind you you have to know their uh, certain treaties and convention are very closely related and there are many uh, there are there is a very few difference between them so you have to know the few difference between them to easily identify in, in the exam we have vienna convention we have helensky convention we have montreal protocol related to ozone protection we have Cartagena Protocol, which speaks of safe handling, transport and use of living modified organisms. All right. We have the Rotterdam Convention. Again, I, as I told you, there are, very, there are various treaties and there are certain treaties which are very closely related and there is very minor difference between them. So we need to know the difference. For example, Rotterdam Convention is also related to hazardous waste and Basel Convention is also related to e-waste. So the difference between two is Basel Convention is specifically related to e-waste and Rotterdam Convention is related to hazardous waste. It is a multilateral treaty for certain hazardous chemicals and pesticides in international trade. The next question is you have to match the following oil zapper, oil, Fern, arsenic, brahmi, lead, and willow cadmium. That means oil zapper is used to prevent oil spilling. Fern is used to prevent arsenic contamination. Brahmi is used to prevent lead contamination, and willow is used to prevent cadmium contamination. Oil zapper was uh, formulated by Teddy which helps to prevent oil spilling. Oil spilling is one of the most, uh, is one uh, something which has become very common in today's time. So to, uh, to clear the oceans and the water body which has been oil spilled, this oil zappers are used. It is a mixture of microorganisms. The next question is, Leopold matrix is related to it is related to environmental impact assessment. Environmental impact assessment is one of the tools which is available with the planners to achieve the goal of harmonizing development activities with the environment. This is all said in theory. The practical is something very different. The next question is which of the following statements are correct? Here option C is the correct answer. Environmental impact assessment in India started in 1976-77. This is true. Till 1994, the environmental clearance by the central government was an administrative decision. This uh, topic is not very much important for our prelims. It is basically important for the mains. But still we have included uh, those things which can come in our prelims. The next question is, the major components of environmental impact assessment is, it is all of the above, air environment, sound, aquatic environment. The next question, a very, very important question, individual associated with the Narmada Bachao Andolan. All these three are very important personalities which have contributed so much for the Narmada Bachao Andolan. The next question is, you have to match the following. Again, a very important question. Waterman of India, Rajinder Singh. Birdman of India, Dr. Salim Ali. Riksh Mitra is Sundalal Bahoguna and environmental engineer is G.D. Agarwal. The next question is the name Iceman is famous for its contribution to environmental protection to here yeah. Chiwang Nofil will be the correct answer. He has contributed a lot for the protection of glaciers. Chandi Prasad Bhatt is associated with uh, Chipko movement. He was the founder of the Sholi Gram Swaraj 
Sangh, which was formed in 1964 and which became a mother organization for the Chipko movement. Mike Pandey is known as hero of environment. It, this is also important. Who is known as hero of environment? Mike Pandey. Sonab Vanchuk has also contributed a lot to protection of glaciers and he has formed, come up with the idea of ice stupa for the protection of glaciers. The next question is, which of the following award is known as Green Oscar? Whitley Award is known as Green Oscar. These awards seeks to recognize the outstanding contribution to wildlife conservation with a focus on Asia, Africa, Latin America, etc. It is given by the Whitley Fund for Nature, which is UK based. The next question is, you have to consider the following statement. Here, the correct answer is option D. Alpha diversity is the biodiversity of a community or ecosystem of a certain region. Very true. It is a diversity which indicates within a particular region. The next statement is, Beta diversity refers to the comparison of species diversity between changes with environmental gradient. True. It is beta diversity deals with between two ecosystems. Then we have gamma diversity. It is the overall diversity for the different ecosystem within a region. It refers to abundance of species in a geographical area. So all the statements are correct here. The International Solar Alliance includes countries between Cancer and Capricorn. It was, it, is, it was initiated by India and France in 2015 and uh, the countries between the Cancer, Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. They are known as Surya Putras and the headquarter is situated in Gurugram. The next question is, you have to choose the incorrect statement from the following. The term biodiversity was first used by Walter G. Rosen, correct? The first conference on biodiversity was organized in Rio de Janeiro in 1997. Wrong statement. The first, question, uh, the first conference was organized in the year 1992. It was known as Rio Earth Summit, United Nations Convention on Environment. Rio is, is a city in Brazil. So this was a landmark con conference and it came up with some very important uh, legally binding instruments. For example, the result was Rio Declaration on Environment and Development. We have Agenda, 22, uh, Agenda 21, 21 and we have the Forest Principle. All these are attributions of this uh, Rio Rio de Janeiro conference. We also have legally binding instruments like the CBD which was open to signature by the countries. CBD that is Convention on Biological Diversity. We have UNFCCC, United Nations United Nation Framework on Convention for Climate Change. We have UNFCCC, we have United Nations Convention on to Combat Desertification. The recent United Nations Con uh, Convention to Combat Desertification conference was held in New Delhi. This was held in India this year. So the first statement is correct here. The term biodiversity was first used by Walter G. Rosen. And Rio Earth Summit is very important. Please go, go through this very thoroughly. The last question is, which of the following hotspot is located in India? We have four hotspots in India. This is Indo-Burma region, Himalayan region, Western Ghats and Sri Lanka and Sundar region. So the term biodiversity hotspot was coined by Norman Mears in 1994 or 1981, something like that, but it was coined by Norman Mears. 
to qualify as a hotspot a region must uh, fulfill two strict criteria that is species endemism that is at least 1500 species of vascular plants of the world as endemic it should be endemic 1500 at least 1500 species of vascular plants of the world as endemic and the degree of threat it should have lost 70 percent of its original hotspot these two categories uh, these two criteria are met first to be categorized as a biodiversity hotspot term was given by norman mayers so that's all for this video we'll come up with next series in com coming one to do one or two days till then thank you for listening and like share and subscribe